Welcome to part 2 of the Everlast Power iTIG 200T product video. Today we'll be demonstrating the iTIG 200T's capability as a DC TIG welder. We'll briefly cover everything from the pulse ability to the low amp welding capability of the unit. Let's take a moment to examine the basic TIG welding features of the Power iTIG 200T. The Power iTIG 200T has nearly everything you could ask for in the way of a DC TIG welder. The main features include pulse with a frequency of up to 500 Hz choice of lift and high frequency start, low amp operation, 2T, 4T torch switch control with programmable features such as start amps, end amps, up slope, down slope, pre and post flow of gas. An optional foot pedal is also available for best operation with a foot pedal. Be sure to remember to turn the start and end amps as well as the up and down slope to a minimum setting. For the demonstration, we will be using the stock 26 series TIG torch, which is a 200 amp air-cooled all-purpose torch. For best results during low amp operation, the torch switch will be used for the most stable and consistent results. We'll begin by demonstrating the low amp start and operating capability of the welder. Then we'll switch to the optional economy foot pedal for demonstrating the higher amp capabilities of the welder. The low amp test will begin with a few welds on a thin box cutter type blade. Because of its thin gauge and sharp edge, this is a good test for the welder's capability. The first low amp test will be conducted with the welder set to 3 amps. It will be used in the 2T mode with the start and end amps as well as the up and down slope set to the minimum. Pre-flow is set to 0.5 seconds, post-flow is set to 3 seconds. Here's the result. Keep in mind we're using a large torch along with a number 5 cup and a 1 16th inch tungsten. Even better results can be achieved by using a smaller torch and a smaller tungsten. To make the demonstration a little more difficult, we're actually going to start an arc and weld along the back side of the blade. It takes a second or two to make sure the tungsten is centered over the back side of the blade so the arc will start. The blade backside is still mostly intact and only the center tab suffered any metal loss. For the final part of the low amp demonstration, we have actually flipped it over and will be welding along the blade's razor edge. Here you can see where the arc started up and welded fairly cleanly along the edge. However, you can see a little more melting where the arc was initiated before forward travel began. We opted to run this test of 3 amps. Better results may have been possible at the unit's lowest setting of 2 amps, but again, we are demonstrating with the stock torch and a reasonably small electro diameter of 1 16th of an inch. For the standard weld test without pulse, we will make a short fillet weld to demonstrate the arc stability. This test is conducted with the panel amp set to 125 amps and using the optional foot pedal. The plate thickness is approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch thick.
Here are the results. The starts and restarts were easy and flawless. The weld metal flowed smoothly into the sides of the weld with no overlap or undercut. In the next several passes, we are experimenting with different pulse frequencies. Pulse time on is set at 50%. Peak welding amps are at 125 amps, and the base welding amps are at 75. You should be able to hear and see the differences in the pulse frequencies with all the other factors remaining the same. We're beginning with pulse set near the bottom frequency at 0.7 Hz. Notice how the pulse is used to time the dips of the filler metal. Now we are at the maximum pulse frequency setting. Notice how stiff the arc seems and how reluctantly the puddle wets in at the maximum frequency. Remember, we are using the same basic settings we were at 0.7 Hz. Some frequencies aren't as useful as others. At 5 Hz, it's hard to see much improvement. To the untrained eye, the arc may appear unstable. Notice at the 50 and 60 Hz level, the switching frequency imitates the sound of the AC welding arc. However, this unit is not switching polarity, but it is changing the welding amperage. At 120 Hz, the pulse seems well balanced and takes on a controlled feel. This concludes part one of the Everlast Power ITIG 200T welding video. In part two, we'll cover the stick welding capabilities of the iTIG 200T. If you have any questions about the Everlast Power iTIG 200T or any Everlast welding product, please contact us at the number listed above. Thanks for watching.